In this lecture, we're going to take a look at some of the differences between Java and Groovy. Even if you're new to Groovy, I think it's important that you sit through this one. As we mentioned at the beginning of this course, Groovy was never created with the intention of replacing Java. Groovy just instead looks to build on Java and make certain parts of the language more concise and expressive. I think the best way to understand this though is to see it in action. So let's jump into a demo and take a look at moving from a Java class to a Groovy class. So I'll link to the appropriate source code in the additional resources, but here we are in a particular uh, subfolder called Java to Groovy. And we have a start.groovy. So I'm gonna actually copy that over to something called finish.groovy. And that'll give us a new file that we can just kind of work with and pick away at. So here is my class and there's not a lot going on here. Um, I have a basic class and, and in the Java world, that we often refer to this as a Java bean or a, uh, or a pojo, a plain old Java object. In the Groovy world, it's pretty much the same. Uh, we refer to them as Groovy beans or plain old Groovy objects. So let's start with the import statement at the top. Let me go ahead and make this a little bigger. So at the top, we're importing java.util.date. Again, if you're new to Java, don't worry about that. We're gonna walk through this. So we have a field down here called DOB for date of birth in our user class, and it's of type date. Now to use a date in our Java class, we need to import the appropriate class, and that's in the java.util package. So one of the things that Groovy does for us right off the bat is we don't need any import statements because by default, it's going to import all of these particular packages, which have a ton of classes underneath them. And this is done because the classes from these packages are most commonly used. By importing these, boilerplate, boilerplate code is reduced. And I don't know if you've ever looked at some Java source code, but even for like simple classes and programs, you'll see just a ton of import statements. And that's because a lot of these classes use this functional, you know, use a lot of this basic functionality. So we don't need any import statements to go ahead and start our program. Um, the next thing I want to look at is access modifiers, and that is this public keyword. Uh, methods and classes are by default public. So if we wanted to go ahead and jump through here and look at everything that's declared as public, we can go ahead and get rid of that. So that's, we've gotten rid of public. Um, now we can look at return statements. Return statements are almost always optional. Groovy treats the last line as a return statement, so we can get rid of a lot of those. So anywhere you see a return something, we can go ahead and get rid of those. All right, so we're starting to make some progress here. Um, semicolons are almost always optional as well. If you want to separate two statements on the same line though, you will still need a semicolon, but we don't have any of those here. So let's take a look at all of these in our program. And let's get rid of those. All right, so we're starting to trim down some more. Now we're gonna look at properties here. So properties, when we call property in our code such as user.firstName, we aren't actually referencing the property. Instead, we're calling a getter on, on that property that Groovy creates for us. If we want to make a property read-only, we can still declare it using the keyword final. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. But for the most part, we can simplify a lot of this code. So first off, we don't need these guys. Let's go ahead and get rid of them. And a lot of this boilerplate code in this particular class is creating getters and setters for each of our properties. Now we can, we can easily uh, generate these in our IDEs, but anytime you make a change, whether you remove a property or add a property, you gotta come back and generate those again. When Groovy, we don't have to worry about that. We can get rid of all of these getters and setters. 
Okay, so now we've kind of slimmed that down. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is constructors. So we have three constructors here, a noarg constructor, and then two different types of constructors that take different parameters and different ways to instantiate our user object. Um, we can actually initialize our Java bean or our Groovy Beans using named parameters. So there is no need for all these different constructors here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. Next, I want to look at this uh, this method here called print full name, and all of this is a convenient with uh, method to kind of print out the full name. Well, we can still use system dot out dot print line, but the nice thing is in Groovy, this is actually added as a what's called a default method, so we no longer need to use the system dot out to call print line on it. And in that same case, these parentheses are actually um, optional as well, so we don't need those. We could kind of clean this up as well. We can say first name, space, a last name. So you can see that kind of, we're, we're, we'll talk more about groovy strings um, later and that'll kind of make more sense, but we can clean that up as well. And then we can do something cool here. We can actually get rid of the two string and we can use groovy.transform.toString. And that annotation is doing some uh, meta programming that again we're going to dive into later but that kind of cleaned up the need to write our own override for a two string method. So you can see that we've taken this way down so let's actually close this and I'm going to open this in Ruby console. All right, so um, we've taken and we've taken this huge Java class into this really compact Groovy class, and what I want to do now is have the ability to actually test this class out, not not an actual like unit test or something like that. I just want to see if I can go ahead and create a user and print out the user, right? Um, if we wanted to test that in Java, we we have to create a new Java class that contained say like a static void main method. That method would then instantiate the class and call, um, you know, system.out.println to call the user's toString method and print the user object somewhere to the console. In this example, we can just treat this as a script and do it all right here. So we can say user user is equal to new user. And again, we're using named parameters to go ahead and instantiate our object. So I'm going to say Dan. No, per, no semicolon needed. So now we can just say print line user. So we don't need two string. It's just going to call a two string on it automatically. And here we go. So the parameters that we didn't provide are just defaulted to no. And the first name and last name that I passed into our constructor here created a new user. So uh, I think that's great. I think that's where we're going to kind of stop, though. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but I hope you can already see how much less boilerplate code our Groovy program use. Throughout this course, we're going to see many examples where Groovy makes writing code fun again and, and so much less um, just typing out, um, you know, becoming a code machine. That, that's not what we are. We want to have fun writing code. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I can't wait to see you in the next one.